well, what did it cost you? You know, you, you can pull this truck once, you can pull this trick twice, but eventually, you know, when does it end? Now, there are some doomers who say this can just go on forever, that, you know, the, the American people have no spine and there will never be any real, uh, you know, uh, consequence for this. But I think we are starting to see it. Um, I think we really are socially manifesting. A few years ago, if a, you know, if a, if a news organization challenged a Republican and said, you disagreed with an official source, therefore, you know, you're some kind of crazy conspiracy theorist, that Republican would jump back in line. And that's because the Republicans are useless and garbage. But increasingly, there are people who are inside administrations, inside organizations, even inside the Republican Party itself, who are recognizing that this is a failing tactic, that they can't be cowed by this, that if they continue to worry more about what the media is labeling them than what people are actually seeing, that they're going to lose power in a real way. Some of them genuinely want change. Some of them are just reacting to incentives. But either way, I think there is a, a serious shift. Not enough. There are still far too many people in the GOP and even in the conservative movement more broadly that still, you know, clamor for the respect of the New York Times or ABC or NBC or Harvard or whatever. But more and more politicians are realizing, leaders are realizing that there is more to be gained by questioning the system and questioning its results and questioning the manipulation than there is by buying into it and maintaining the respectability of credible institutions because there is no credible their credibility in those institutions. They are trading on it. They are, they are burning it uh, as fast as they can. And so I think that is a positive direction. It's bad for the overall society because we rely on that institutional consensus to coordinate our vast bureaucratic managerial uh, system. But it is good for those who recognize that system is ultimately harmful to the well-being of people because, as you've pointed out repeatedly, they are actively ignoring that in the hopes of creating this data, manipulating this data, and compelling outcomes. But even our political leaders, even many of whom have been cowards in the past, are starting to recognize if they want a future, they have to be willing to, credit, to, to question at some level what is coming out of these official sources. Well, definitely. Right. And look, you know, neither you nor I is particularly liberal, right, in the broadest sense of that word. But there is something to the idea of the consent of the governed, right? People have to think that their government is at least in some way legitimate. And if the government can't hold up its end of the deal, right, if it can't do the things that governments do, like at a very basic level, provide security, it loses legitimacy. Okay, that doesn't matter immediately, right? Losing the mandate of heaven doesn't immediately kick you out of power. But the problem is, right, governments depend on a lot of soft power, right? How often in your life do you really interact with government force? Probably not that often. But, you know, you assume that if I don't do what I'm supposed to, someone will come and get me, right? They need, they, that, that is basically the game they play. And if they lose that respect, right, if people don't assume that they are you know, dangerous or capable or you know, worthy of respect, well, you get something like the government of Haiti, right? Where everyone basically just does whatever they want and the government is not a factor in their life, right? It doesn't matter to them. And I think that, you know, I'm not trying to take this in a libertarian direction, not at all. But the problem is in order to run a country, you need to be seen as at least by a certain percentage of people as legitimate and as being really in charge. I mean, look at, you know, like the Russia-Ukraine situation. You know, there are places where they're technically legally still part of Ukraine, uh, but Russians drove tanks through there. So it's like, well, does it matter if you're, a, another example, in Colorado, right, technically part of the U.S., but a bunch of Venezuelan guys control the block with guns, right? right. Who's really in charge? Right. And so this loss of, of sovereignty, right, it's not purely theoretical. It does matter. And I think that to your point, right, it's not good in the short term, because I want to live in a good country. But as someone who despises this government, well, they're kind of doing it to themselves. Yeah. I mean, at some point, maybe we'll get the, the dredge dread roll out, you know, you just, you know, put, put the whole combo in there. You, know, you can, <laughs> yeah, really the, the only way to, to actually police, uh, you know, mega city one is, is through that kind of justice. But as we inst- can't make some of these Democrat cities worse, right? <laughs> no, I know it would, it would strictly be an upgrade from the current system. I, I don't. Well, while I may be joking about the creation of that bureau, I'm not joking for about you know it, 
how it would be an improvement in the slightest. It, it all depends on your definition of the term community policing, Ari. <laughs> That's exactly right.